We live in the ultimately shameless world today. The world in which streaming videos off of any website are mo available on your mobile device. The age in which the pornography industry is a multi-trillion dollar industry. The point of which, the agenda of which to, is to make sure every one of you is a consumer of filth in one way or another. That every man, woman and child is exposed to this stuff and they're hoping you are so you become addicted to it so you become yet another consumer. This is, this is, the, this is the gift of pornography to society. It's cre creating people, turning people into animals and perverts. And some of you unfortunately have that addiction. And you're watching this stuff online. And you're watching it and saving it on your apps and your mobile devices. And you don't feel bad about it anymore. You've justified it to yourself. And you feel bad about it once in a while, but you go back to it. And as a res you think, oh, well, I'm not, at least I'm not hurting anybody. At least I'm not doing it to anybody else. I'm just watching this stuff. It's okay. But you know what's happening to you? Inside, your soul is being just gutted. You have no soul left inside of you. So your prayers are empty and you can't even shed a tear in your salat because your heart is so devoid of the fear of Allah because of the filth you've been watching all this time. It's turned you from a human being into an animal. So you can't even look. You, a woman passes by and you, look, you, you see a piece of flesh walking by. You don't see a human being walking by that deserves respect. You check everybody out and everything out. You're, you're constantly gawking and staring. You, can, you have a hard time putting your eyes down. When you're on the subway, when you're on campus, when you're at work, you're walking down the street, you know, you just can't help. You see a billboard, you look at you take a second look, you see a third look. You don't miss any opportunity to just to, to, to violate your soul with your eyes. You're, you're addicted completely. And then you say, brother, how do I get khushu'ah and salat? What world are you living in? What world are you living in? Ayyuhal ikhwa, my brothers, specifically my brothers. And I know some sisters have this issue too. It's, not a, it's a sad reality. This is a war. This is a war. This is more dangerous than any military war. This is the war that's destroying our souls. It's making its way into our homes. It's making its way, you know, if I want to protect my children from this stuff as much as possible. But when my child goes to school, and it doesn't matter if it's Islamic school, there's a very high statistical likelihood that someone, a friend, uh, with their iPod, with their mobile device, will say, hey, look at this. It's a, it's a very realistic you know, a, a, a thing nowadays. It's not far-fetched. And so I have to prepare my children for the filthy world that they're, they're going to be brought up in. And there's no escape from this stuff anymore. There isn't. It's everywhere. It is everywhere. You have Islamic lectures followed up by, you know those YouTube puts those follow-up clips? And something will be filthy. Something will have to be filthy. And I don't think that's by accident. I'm not much of a conspiracy theorist, but I'm, I don't think that stuff is an accident. And what happens to you guys is you watch a video, you see something filthy, you click it, you click something else, you click something else, and you end up watching disgusting things. That's what happens to you. Especially when it comes to their privates, they guard them. They guard their shame. Brother, what's the solution? Should I get married? Like the guy who asked the other day, was, how can I get married right now? You know? No, guys, the solution is not marriage. Because if you're a pervert, then you're going to be a pervert after marriage too. If you have no shame now, you will have no shame after marriage. Honestly. You, you think marriage is going to end your problems? No. Your problem isn't marriage. Your problem is spiritual in nature. Your problem is psychological in nature. You need help. You need to stop this. You need to stop hurting yourself like this. You will have nothing, there will be nothing left inside you. I just had an email from a teenager who's addicted to pornography, an anonymous email, 14, 15 year old teenager. Says, I want to kill myself. I can't stop. I've been watching it since I was 11. My parents don't know. I read this stuff and I cry because he's not one. There's millions of Muslim kids like this. Millions. Millions of them. We have to help these people. We have to do whatever we can. And it, we don't have the trillions of dollars of advertising to counter that. We don't. And it's, there's, it's not realistic for me to say Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, every, internet, it's all haram. It's not realistic because it's a reality. It's, it's as common as oxygen now. The only thing we can do is have a mature conversation about this and teach our youth to deal with this and navigate this and not fall into it. And it was revealed to the Prophet, peace be upon him, at that point. He said, inform the believing men to lower their gazes 
and protect their private parts or protect their chastity. And then the following verse says, and tell the believing women to lower their gaze and protect their chastity. And Allah informs us that ذَلِكَ أَزْكَى لَهُمْ That this is much purer for them. I so this is for brothers and sisters. You go through relationship, you go through these things, it will have damaging effects on your life. In essence, um, even in, in marriage, even in marriage, you know, you, you'll still have those, those lusts, you'll still have those, you know, you'll still be looking all over the place and you won't be satisfied at home. And the last you'll thing you want know. is to, yeah, you, and that's what's happening here in this, you know, here today, unfortunately, an over 50% divorce rate in this country. That means when you walk down the aisle in, in the United States, in our country, uh, you know, there's a greater than half of a, there's a greater than half chance that that person is going to be battling you in court for custody or for your wealth. Half a chance. Yeah, more than 50%. The divorce rate has risen, risen above 50% at this point. And the argument is very simple. And that is crack and cocaine, you can actually detoxicate the body from it. There might be a time when your body is really cleansed from the remnants of crack and cocaine. Mm -hmm. Sexual images are so imprinted in our heads that getting rid of it almost is next to impossible. So Who is searching for sex? If you actually did it by the numbers related to the, this is done where they actually look at the numbers who have access to the internet based on the population sizes. We have Muslim countries that are outnumbering in their searches, even the United States, which is actually number one for downloads. In a recent article on Huffington Post, Pornhub, the number one visited porno pornography site, claimed that they had 14 billion downloads, 14 billion downloads of pornographic material in, in the last year. One and a half million videos watched worldwide. This is one website every hour. They estimated that 68 billion pornographic videos were watched. What is happening on our planet? This is happening in Muslim countries. You're in denial if you deny this. There are people here who are probably, they have this tribulation. Our Prophet said, If one of you hears about the Dajjal, let him avoid the Dajjal. And then he said, this is in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed. He said, one of you will believe he's a believer and then he'll go and he'll begin to follow him because of what he brings from all the appetites and desires. We have people addicted to these things. They're following. Haven't you seen the one who took his desires as a God? If you're obeying these desires, you are making these desires your God. And Allah is a jealous God. What I would say to those people, because look, I mean, let's face it, pornography and those types of, it's, it's so rampant and people are struggling with it. That would even be good in other areas. They're good Muslims, but they're struggling with that. Just think about the consequences with God. Think about having to meet Allah and having to have that pornography played in front of you and having to explain to Allah that I was watching this in front of you. Because Allah was watching you the whole time. You know, it would get awkward if someone was watching you mm -hmm. while you were watching pornography. Yeah. Allah was watching you. So this is killing your relationship with God. Because in essence, back to the psychology of a cheater, you're purposely trying to ignore God at those moments. No one is sitting there reading Quran while they're watching pornography or remembering God. They're trying to forget that God's watching them at that, at that moment. So remember God is watching you. And as a scholar said, Anta تُرَاقِبُ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ يَرَاقِبُكِ You are in observance of Allah and Allah is in observance of you. This is one of the most destructive uh, aspects the shaitan now has. This destroys families, it destroys your heart, it will, it will put out your inner eye. You will not be able to have any spiritual experiences. Your heart will become like that mujahiyan, what the Prophet ﷺ said, a, a vessel that can't carry any good. Because this is all hawa. And porne in, 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 in Greek means prostitute. One of the tribulations is the faces of prostitutes. People that Allah 
There are people that are punished by giving them the tribulation of looking at the faces of prostitutes. And this is basically anybody who's in these films is a prostitute. Male or female, they're selling their bodies. Ayuhal Ikhwa, my brothers, specifically my brothers, and I know some sisters have this issue too. It's not a, it's a sad reality. This is a war. This is a war. This is more dangerous than any military war. This is the war that's destroying our souls. It's making its way into our homes. It's making its way, you know, if I want to protect my children from this stuff as much as possible. But when my child goes to school, and it doesn't matter if it's Islamic school, there's a very high statistical likelihood that someone, a friend, with their iPod, with their mobile device, will say, hey, look at this. It's a, it's a very realistic you know, a, a, a thing nowadays. It's not far-fetched. And so I have to prepare my children for the filthy world that they're, they're going to be brought up in. And there's no escape from this stuff anymore. There isn't. It's everywhere. It is everywhere. You have Islamic lectures followed up by, you know those YouTube puts those follow-up clips? And something will be filthy. Something will have to be filthy. And I don't think that's by accident. I'm not much of a conspiracy theorist, but I'm not, I don't think that stuff is an accident. And what happens to you guys is you watch a video, you see something filthy, you click it, you click something else, you click something else, and you end up watching disgusting things. That's what happens to you. Especially when it comes to their privates, they guard them. They guard their shame. Brother, what's the solution? Should I get married? Like the guy who asked the other day, was, how can I get married right now? You know? No, guys, the solution is not marriage. Because if you're a pervert, then you're going to be a pervert after marriage too. If you have no shame now, you will have no shame after marriage. Honestly. You, you think marriage is going to end your problems? No. Your problem isn't marriage. Your problem is spiritual in nature. Your problem is psychological in nature. You need help. You need to stop this. You need to stop hurting yourself like this. You will have nothing, there will be nothing left inside you. I just had an email from a teenager who's addicted to pornography, an anonymous email, 14, 15 year old teenager. Says, I want to kill myself. I can't stop. I've been watching it since I was 11. My parents don't know. I read this stuff and I cry because he's not one. There's millions of Muslim kids like this. Millions. Millions of them. We have to help these people. We have to do whatever we can. And it, we don't have the trillions of dollars of advertising to counter that. We don't. And it, there's, it's not realistic for me to say Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, every, internet, it's all haram. It's not realistic because it's a reality. It's, it's as common as oxygen now. The only thing we can do is have a mature conversation about this and teach our youth to... See, subhanAllah, with us, when we are exposed to anything, once it's exciting, twice it's exciting, three times it's almost exciting, four times, then we become desynthesized. So now what happens is that we need to, you know, get some more. What was exciting us initially is not doing it. But we want that excitement. So what you do is that you push more and more and more and that is precisely why there is so much porn out there because eventually when people are desynthesized to it you just keep giving them more so that you create that excitement you keep that excitement coming again and again and again so what happens now the natural stimulants that are within us are now dead we used to call people that watch people in private acts of intimacy, they were called peeping toms. It's a crime in the United States. Now we have large numbers of people watching people in public acts of depravity and profanity, and we call these consumers, consumers of entertainment. Peeping toms are classified as psychologically ill people. And yet people that are consuming this culture that we have ample evidence of the harm that it's having. I listened to a lecture at the Witherspoon Institute on the effects of pornography in terms of the neuroplasticity of the brain and how brains become rewired and it was one of the most troubling talks I'd ever heard. And we now know that our young children from the ages of 12 to 17 are having exposures to pornography on a regular basis. Many, many young people. This is a serious problem in our culture and this is one of the problems. Saddest is when you see a sister coming with her husband saying, Sheikh, 
I'm, you know, next to my husband, I don't feel like I'm a woman. There is nothing that I can do to excite my husband. My husband is only excited when he watches porn. It is just destroying my family. What do you do to that? And if he keeps consuming this, then that is just as good as having an affair. I see this happening every day in my family and there is nothing that I can do about it. And here comes the brother and he is just really embarrassed. Says, yes, it is a problem. I just don't know what to do. So, But then there are major sins. The consumption of haram, like you're drinking a beer. You know, the, 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 the zina of the eyes. It's pretty major. Actual zina. Killing somebody. Consuming riba. Earning riba. You know, endorsing it. Saying something that Allah has made haram. That it's no big deal, it's okay, it's halal, Allah will understand, things like that. These are major sins. Allah says, you want to be people of the afterlife? Number one thing you give me is don't do major sins. Kaba'ir al-ithm, stay away from the big stuff. You can refine yourself and work on the smaller things over time. And become better and better and better as a Muslim. But the first order of priority is the major, major sins. If you're dating a girl, you're in major sin. If you're dating a guy, you're in major sin. You need to stop before you worry about anything else in Islam. If you're addicted to pornography, you're in, in a deep. This is a, bad, this is a deep problem. It's a deep, deep spiritual problem. You need to get away from it because the zina of the eyes will lead to other kinds of zina. You need to stop. That is the first thing you have to address. If you're addicted to alcohol, if you're taking drugs, if you're smoking weed, if you're, if you're doing pot, or worse, you know, if you're doing this stuff, you need to stop. If you're stealing money, if you're stealing money from your parents, if you're stealing money from your job, you need to stop. If you're investing in what you know are haram industries, and you're making money in a way that you know is not you know, permissible by, by our deen. You know? And if you're even, if you, even if you're like, oh, I'm in an innocent business, I'm in real estate. Okay, that's innocent enough, but I rent out my warehouse to a club. <laughs> okay, you're not clubbing. You're just renting it out to them. You are perpetuating evil. You may not be the facet, you may not be the corrupt one, but you are the cause of corruption. Without you renting it out, it wouldn't exist. So you're complicit. You're complicit in that. Stop doing the major stuff first. And then the second line of defense, personally, well, fawahish, all forms of shamelessness, you need to stop. And I particularly highlighted shamelessness. As I was talking to you, dating, pornography, this sort of thing. Why? Because Allah took major sins and immediately after highlighted in particular, shamelessness and all forms of it. Any act of it, any manifestation of it, anything that takes you clo close to it, avoid it altogether. And when they get angry, then they are able to forgive. These are the things that we need to prioritize. And these are the goals you need to set for yourself. How will you surround yourself with people that will help you avoid major sins? That will give you fresh, fresh company, good company, that keeps you on the right track. And when you're uh, to him or her, because porn is not only an addiction of men, but women are addicted to it as well. I say that there is really hope, and I would say please do get the help. Please get professional help. Please see uh, a therapist out there to help you with the uh, with the addiction. And remember, you know, uh, simply because a person is addicted to it, it does not necessarily automatically make that person inherently bad. But we would say that at this point, we are making poor choices and there is a way of getting rid of the poor choices by getting the professional help out there. It does create problems for people later on when they get married, etc., where that became a habit and they can't get fulfilled in normal husband-wife relations. I've picked cases, people came to me and complained about this. You know, this can happen. This is not a good thing. And the Prophet Sallallahu when he gave the options for that, those who are not able to fast, he didn't say, you can masturbate. No. He said, I mean, sorry, those who are not able to get married, he said, fast. That's what he said. So fasting has been given to us as the way of controlling our desires in this regard. So that's what we should do. Take that which the Prophet Sallallahu gave us. Here I want you to know Allah describes the agenda of shaitan. I have 10 minutes left for this. 8 minutes. Oh, this is hard. 
Allah says li. فَوَسْوَسَ لَهُمَ الشَّيْطَانُ li. This is called lam al-ta'leel in Arabic. It means the, the lam of giving a reason. So Allah is saying, shaitan whispered to both of them for the, this reason. Here's what he wanted them to do. Here's his rationale. If he can get them to do this, he will be successful. What is that? يُبْدِيَ لَهُمَا مَا وُرِيَ عَنْهُمَا مِنْ سَوْآتِهِمَا So he can expose to them what was covered up of their bodies, of their ugliness. He wanted them to have their clothes removed. Shaitan's agenda against a human being was not the fruit. Allah does not say the agenda was eat the fruit, eat from the tree. That was on the outside. On the inside, his real motive was get their clothes off. Why am I telling you this? Multi-billion dollar, trillion dollar industry. An industry that outshines Google, Microsoft, Intel, the entire technology sector put together does not compare with the pornography industry. Does not. One agenda. One, get humanity to remove their clothes. Get, get them to do that. And all of it to sell us, to, so we can become followers of shaitan. All of that for this. To this day, to this day, the biggest marketing ploy, the biggest tool in advertising, the hardest thing to escape for my children. I don't want them to see filth. But the billboard is right there. They're trying to, afala yanzuruna ila sama. I want them to look at the sky, but to look at the sky, they have to take a glance at that filthy billboard. I want them to be able to, be able to use technology. There's nothing wrong with technology. But how easy is it to just run into a banner? Run into some filth? Even if your children are going to Islamic school, how are you safe from some other child not bringing some filth on his phone? On his PSP? On her PSP? How? Multi-billion dollar, to, to, they, they've done this, so that this filth has become as common as oxygen itself. Impossible to escape. This is the battle shaitan is winning. This is the battle. To get human beings to not care about their covering. To lose their... People that watch a lot of pornography, neuroplasticity now will rewire their brains. So people that are watching pornography on a regular basis um, are actually, they have different brains than other people and, and they have obsessional thoughts and, and uh, it, they begin to objectify women. It, it, it creates deterioration of family. And over a long period of time, about 10 years of pornography watching leads to impotence. And this has been proven, uh, you know, that, that actually men will eventually become impotent from watching this because their, their arousal factor is no longer functioning anymore. So th these are real problems that people aren't willing to think about or study and, and, and address. And Something else that porn does SubhanAllah, with porn, people who are engaged in it, you know, people talk about poor self-esteem. You want to know about poor self-esteem? Ask a person who's addicted to porn. I'm just ashamed of myself. I can't even see myself. I can't even look myself in the mirror. What happens? Please pay attention. If our principles are up there, our principles and values are up there, and our actions and behaviors are down here, the higher the gap between what we believe, what we think, and what we do, the higher the gap, the more misery we bring into our lives. What it is now that I become very ashamed of what I have done, and I become guilty about what I have, how I have behaved, and I become very ashamed of myself. And as a result, people become depressed. More ashamed, more depressed, more ashamed, more depressed, and it just gets to be a vicious cycle. So not only now it's impacting our families, killing our natural stimulants, but now it's just the way that we see ourselves, it is just too embarrassing. I can't even look myself in the mirror. And as a result, we want to avoid all of that. But it must begin with awareness. What is happening there is serious stuff. And unless we take a stand, empower one another, then we are going to be in deep trouble. Another major problem, we, the, the UN estimates there are more slaves today than any other time in human history. And most of it, 80% is sexual slavery. And this is another really serious problem, the problem of lust that we're really not dealing with in our society. I really think we're in a deep denial about the serious problem of lust in this culture. And, and one, one of the, the most important thermometers for it 
is pornography. The size of the industry now is 57 billion worldwide. It's a massive industry. These are, these are sound numbers, people. These are not exaggerated numbers. These are, these are taken from at one, one of our top universities, 12 billion in the US. Porn revenue is larger than all combined revenues of all professional football, baseball, and basketball franchises. US porn revenue exceeds the combined revenues of ABC, CBS, and NBC. If you look at the, the websites, 4.2 million, 12% of total websites now. Daily internet searches, 68 million. 25% of total searches. Monthly porn downloads, 1.5 billion. Websites offering illegal child pornography, over 100,000 websites. And for those of you who don't know, there's a deep web where there's just the darkness that goes on on the deep web. Um, and then eight to 16 year olds ha who have viewed porn online in our country, 90%. Gluttony, overconsumption. Those who squander are like siblings of, of, uh, or the brethren of the demons. One of the things that we don't think about is the relationship to what we do and, and, and this darkness. People that are watching pornography are supporting human trafficking because many of the women in these films that are done here in the United States and outside the United States are women in sexual bondage. They're, they're not, you, you know, you have these girls that appear on CNN getting their degree at Duke and saying how much they love being a porn star, those represent a very, very, very tiny percentage of the actual women engaged in the porn industry, which degrades both men and women. The age in which the pornography industry is a multi-trillion dollar industry, the point of which, the agenda of which is to make sure every one of you is a consumer of filth in one way or another. That every man, woman, and child is exposed to this stuff and they're hoping you are, so you become addicted to it, so you become yet another consumer. This is, this is, the, this is the gift of pornography to society. It's cre creating people, turning people into animals and perverts. And some of you, unfortunately, have that addiction. And you're watching this stuff online. And you're watching it and saving it on your apps and your mobile devices. And you don't feel bad about it anymore. You've justified it to yourself. And you feel bad about it once in a while, but you go back to it. And as a res you think, oh, well, I'm not, at least I'm not hurting anybody. At least I'm not doing it to anybody else. I'm just watching this stuff. It's OK. But you know what's happening to you? Inside, your soul is being just gutted. You have no soul left inside of you. So your prayers are empty, and you can't even shed a tear in your salat because your heart is so devoid of the fear of Allah because of the filth you've been watching all this time. It's turned you from a human being into an animal. So you can't even look. You, a woman passes by, and you, look, you, you see a piece of flesh walking by. You don't see a human being walking by that deserves respect. You check everybody out and everything out. You're, you're constantly gawking and staring. You, can, you have a hard time putting your eyes down. When you're on the subway, when you're on campus, when you're at work, you're walking down the street, you know, you just can't help. You see a billboard, you look at you take a second look, you see a third look. You don't miss any opportunity to just to, to, to violate your soul with your eyes. You just, you're addicted completely. And then you say, brother, how do I get khushu and salat? What world are you living in? Increase your good deeds. So if you fulfill your salah together with the sunnah, together with the nafila, and you take your time in the masjid, believe me, it will protect you from so much of evil. If you are a person who loves to fulfill their salah in the masjid, to come on time, to fulfill your wudu, to read your sunnah, believe me, it is a fact when Allah says, Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Salah prohibits a person or stops a person or prevents a person from that which is immoral and evil. It is a fact. Believe me, try it. Read your salah properly. Leave your heart hanging in the masjid as the hadith makes mention of the seven categories of people who will be earning the shade on the day of Qiyamah. One of them is Rajulun Qalbuhu Mu'allakum Bil Masajid. A person, a man whose heart is hanging or is stuck in the masjid. He, when he comes out, He's asking himself every, when am I going back? When is the next salah? That's his concern. How will that person be able to engage in haram and be able to engage in that which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala?